Being without Julio the past couple of weeks, I'm just curious, what is the difference um, for you as a coordinator in devising a game plan when you've got Calvin as your number one instead of Julio? I imagine that they do something similarly, but also some things differently. Do you have to kind of tailor anything to what Calvin does really well? Yeah, we try to, for sure. Uh, <clears throat> you know, anytime, uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate when we're healthy that we have we have two number one wide receivers. <clears throat> and anytime you have two number one receivers, the defense makes it tough on them to, to take them both out of the game, you know, to double them. And, and these guys are good enough that they beat double coverage uh, some of the time. But, uh, you know, it definitely, it definitely changes when, when Julio's out or, or vice versa when Rid's out. I mean, it, it, that works both ways, but uh, yeah, we, we always try to, try to get certain things in that those guys do best. And then uh, <clears throat> Russ, Russ and the other receivers are kind of left to fill in, fill in the holes in between. But, you know, Russ, we've had so many games this year for one reason or another, where Russ has been basically our number two receiver that, you know, he's, he's really developed some things that he does well also. And so we try to build those in the best we can as well. And and looking ahead to this final game against Tampa, knowing you know how aggressive they like to be on defense with Todd Bowles, how important will first and second down be in this game to you know stop you guys from being kind of the third and long situation where they can tee off a little bit? Yeah, extremely. I mean, that's you know that's really the only way you can be successful against most good defenses, but Tampa in particular, if you if you get behind the chains, that that same scenario played out played out in Kansas city yesterday. You know, when we, when we stayed ahead of the chains, we did fine. Uh, when we, you know, when we had a holding penalty or, you know, some kind of a lost yardage play and got behind the chains, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But so you, you know, that's, that'll, that'll definitely be one of our goals this week is to stay ahead of the chains on first and second. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Hey coach. Um, you know, Going back to Calvin, uh, you know, from a technical standpoint, what goes into becoming a great route runner and how have you seen Calvin kind of evolve in, in that aspect over the last couple of years you've worked with him? Yeah, I think I think Calvin uh, continues to to get better as a route runner with experience. And I think all, all players do. And as they as they learn and study NFL defenses and what defenses try to do against them. You know, so much of the NFL is beaten press coverage, where in college that's not really much of a factor. Uh, you know, college, maybe with the exception of the SEC, is a lot of zone defense and a lot of off coverage. So, you know, learning to beat press, working on your releases, uh, and then how you, how your release fits into the concept of the route, that, that takes a while. Uh, learning to change speeds with your routes and uh, – you know, learning when you have to play physical, when you can just trust your speed. But like, uh, you know, I think I think Calvin has gotten better and better. And uh, you know, two two good examples of that were on the on his 54 yard play yesterday. If you look at his release at the line of scrimmage, he won at the line of scrimmage there, and then turned it turned a you know 10 or 12 yard throw into a 54 yard gain, and. Uh, then in that last drive, he ran he ran a beautiful slant off a off a reverse seam release that Matt hit him on a nine yard gain, and then on the I don't know the second or third to last play we ran a slant and go and had him for a touchdown. Unfortunately, you know Matt got hit from behind and, and couldn't get it off. So yeah, I think I think Calvin has uh, has improved a lot and will continue to. And he's you know on top of that he's very 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 talented receiver. So um, just going back to something you just said, uh, if a lot of the college players uh, don't typically play press coverage at that level, as a coach, evaluator, what are you looking for? What kind of traits from the college level maybe are you looking for that, that have you think that that can translate, they can be successful in that department when you're, yeah, when you're scouting them? Well, everybody looks at uh, height, weight, and speed, playmaking ability. Uh, will they catch the ball in traffic? Can they separate? And, and, you know, like you might watch, you might watch guys that have a lot of catches, but they never have to beat anybody in tight quarters. And, uh, 
you know, last year, I, uh, I can't remember them all right now, but there, we did a lot. We did a lot of work on receivers last year. And, and that's why I think, I think you see some guys, uh, transition easily to the NFL and uh, some other guys, it takes them a little bit longer. Cool. Thanks coach. d -Led? Yeah, coach. Um, uh, what was working for you in the run game yesterday? The running backs average uh, 4.6 a carry. Yeah, we got yeah we got really good push at the line of scrimmage. You know, we got some movement. So they're they're you know I think we talked last week what what hurts your run game is in a zone in a zone run scheme. What hurts your run game is penetration, and we didn't have nearly as much penetration yesterday. Uh, we got good push at the point of attack. I thought. Uh, I thought Ito on the wide zones really did a nice job of uh, pressing the line of scrimmage and then working the cutback. I thought Todd, you know, Todd was, uh, we were backed up a lot yesterday. You know, we have three drives inside our own seven or eight yard line. Mm -hmm. So like on short yardage and backed up runs, I thought Todd did a really good job of being decisive and hitting it and moving the pile. And then, uh, you know, Brian Hill had a had just that was probably the the 17 yard run that Brian Hill had was probably the best overall execution by 10 of the 11 players of any run play we've had all year. I mean, I mean, that's like uh, exactly how a coach envisions a play that particular play working. I mean, every guy did his job very well on that play. And Brian made a really nice run and finish. Mm -hmm. And um uh, how did uh, the young guys play up front? Were they a part of that push, Gano and Hennessy? And then uh, Keith Smith is the number one rated fullback, according to Pro Football Focus nowadays. Well, Pro Football Focus says it. It must be true. You can probably write it in your articles and quote it as gospel. Yes, sir. Uh, I, no, I think I think Keith had a, had, had a good day yesterday. You know, he had two nice, nice catches and finishes and – you know, we were running a, a fair amount of power plays yesterday, and uh, Keith and Chris Lindstrom were <coughs> Chris Lindstrom as the puller and Keith as the lead, lead blocker mm -hmm. uh, did a really nice job on that. Uh, you know, I think, I think uh, Matt Gono, it's just it's different playing at guard than it is playing at tackle. Everything happens quicker. It's a shorter area. And, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, we don't see Kansas City very much. No, Ninety-five from Kansas City. Yeah. I'd heard how good he was, and I'll, I'll be the first to say that tape didn't do justice of how good of a football player ninety-five is. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think for Hennessy, you know, we put him in a tough spot in that this is really his first time playing center in the NFL, and here we are in our fifteenth game, mm -hmm. and with no preseason games, really no time at center. Kansas City, that was also the loudest game, you know, that, that that was actually legit crowd noise. We had to use silent count for the first time this year, yesterday. And so I think I think Hennessy's uh, future is bright down the road at, at center, but it you know, it was a good learning experience for him for sure yesterday. <laughs> 